Nearly half a century ago, during America's Apollo moon missions, an astronaut decided to conduct an experiment related to trees. While his two colleagues were actually walking on the moon, Stuart Rusa was orbiting the lunar surface with seeds he had planted to determine if space would have an impact on germination. When they came back home, the seedlings were distributed around the country. Tennessee got four of them for a future of living, dying, and cloning. The classic architecture, a style similar to Oxford in England, brings a visual sense of sophistication to the University of the South in Sewanee, Tennessee. Founded just before the Civil War by the Episcopal Church, the campus is rich with history, and a part of that past remains in the present. A sycamore tree standing strong and tall, but still a stranger to some of the students. I just found out that it's called the moon tree, except I've never really heard much about it until right now, and I didn't know the story until a few seconds ago. You know, most students don't know it's here, you know, unless they walk by and read the plaque. So why do we have a moon tree? Good question. When we first started cataloging famous trees of Tennessee back in 1998 by the Tennessee Urban Forestry Council, we had no concept that we were going to run across trees that had been around the moon. The discovery led back to NASA's third successful lunar launch and the many questions about the impact of going beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Back during the Apollo missions, uh, there was a lot of interest in how other organisms would experience the effects of space. Ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Launch commit. We have liftoff. 1971, Apollo 14 lifted off from Cape Kennedy with three astronauts, uh, Alan Shepard, Ed Mitchell, and Stuart Rusa. Rusa had been in previous life a smoke jumper with U.S. Forest Service. Uh, NASA allowed those three astronauts to take personal items on board. And where Alan Shepard took uh, a golf club and golf and became famous for the longest drive in history on the moon surface, Stuart Rusa, which most people didn't understand, he carried tree seeds, five different species of tree seeds. One of which was uh, a seed of a sycamore, and it was brought back along with others, and they were planted, germinated, and grown, and it was shown that indeed there wasn't a whole lot of effect on germination, which is what they were interested in looking at. And so they had all these trees uh, that had been to the moon, essentially, and so they distributed them uh, to various places, such as universities as ours. and. Uh, we got one, and this has been here since the 1970s, growing quite well, as you can see. This is a American sycamore. The tree distribution was part of the nation's 1976 bicentennial celebration. The Tennessee Department of Agriculture was given four trees, the sycamore that was planted here at Sewanee, a second one for Sycamore Shoals State Park, and two loblolly pines. One of the loblolly pine passed away just soon after it was planted at Tullahoma Air Force Base. And the other loblolly pine, the remaining loblolly pine, is doing quite well at the UT Arboretum in, in Oak Ridge. The American sycamore at Sycamore Shoals State Park survived for more than 50 years, but got very sick. Well, it was planted inside the Palisade Fortress uh, of the historic uh, Sycamore Shoals. Human traffic compacted the soils around the tree roots, and so the tree started at a basic decline over many, many years, and we were concerned that it was going to eventually die, and we were going to lose one of the famous moon trees. It was a well-founded concern because the tree did die and has now been reduced to a stump. But before its demise, foresters from the State Department of Agriculture cut wood samples from the tree and took them to the University of Tennessee Tree Improvement Program. We had uh, done our homework on sycamore and found that it rooted fairly easy. We didn't need to use rooting hormones or anything, just make sure that we collected the uh, cuttings at the right time of the year. Dr. Scott Schlarbaum immediately began the cloning process. I snipped them like that, and there you can see the first year wood, wood formed this year. And because this leaf is so big, I wanted to cut down on, uh, get a better root shoot ratio, so I cut the leaf in half, and then some of them I'd scrape it up a little bit just so any emerging roots could get through a little easier. And then I took them over to this bed of hemlock cuttings. So I just put them right in here. This is a misting bed. And 
left them there all summer. So toward the end of the summer of, of 2018, we uh, harvested, you might say, all of the rooted cuttings. There were nine. One uh, died after we uh, transitioned it, and they were about that tall. We took them out to the plant sciences farm where we have facilities out there. When we get out there, you'll see the, the growth on these trees, and, and they're just spectacular. So as of right now, we've got eight clones of the moon tree, and I think two of them will be large enough to plant by the end of the summer, and they can fall plant them. Oh, this is a fantastic project. I mean, he has preserved, he has helped us preserve a living species of tree that we could not have duplicated anywhere else. Now, had we lost the moon tree, it would have been gone forever. And then we'll keep two here, uh, just in case something happens to those. We'll nurture those trees around, give them really good care, have, have them really healthy, and then if we need to take more cuttings, then we can. Back on the University of the South campus, cloning has not been necessary. The tree is still the original, with the potential of surviving for hundreds of years. While not everyone knows about it, science students especially appreciate and respect the moon tree that lives among them. I really enjoy the tree. Uh, I'm in the lab a lot. I can see it out of some of the windows upstairs. I think there's something inspiring about um, exploration. Uh, I've always had a fascination with space. Of course, I've chose to study uh, biochemistry because I think there's also something uh, interesting inside of all of us and all living things for that matter. When I think about our American sycamore here on campus, I'm really excited that we as a university had the opportunity to have this tree. I don't think any studies have shown that it's different from any other American sycamore, but what the Apollo program and the American Space Program in general gave the United States are these awesome satellites that give us the ability to see, map, and better understand our planet um, socially, environmentally, and just in general. So the tree sort of symbolizes what space can do for us back home on Earth. As someone who has to teach students about how plants are different from us, you use every angle you can get, and, and you know, you, it's because it's important. Even though you look around, it's, the world is green, and, and you can't miss plants, most people just take that for granted, and we call that sort of plant blindness. And so, you know, a story like this, where you know, this tree was a fellow passenger with astronauts, the moon, you know, it's engaging, it's exciting for kids. I think it definitely makes me wonder what else I'm missing besides this one tree right here and gets you kind of thinking about the rest of the campus and what other important plants and buildings and everything there are all around. Tennessee's Wild Side broadcast for nearly two decades was originally created through a vision of the Jackson Foundation. The foundation remains a supportive partner in the mission to educate viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure. Wildside is produced by Rockwater TV with support from Tennessee State Parks, where you can discover our state's diverse heritage through spectacular landscapes, family-friendly recreation, and affordable lodging. Tennessee State Parks, fun and adventure naturally. And with support from the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, promoting wise uses of Tennessee's agricultural and forest resources to develop economic opportunities and to ensure safe and dependable food, fuel, and fiber for all citizens. And also with support from Nissan, working together with the Nature Conservancy to fulfill its mission of conserving land and water on which all life depends, and now celebrating 40 years of conservation in Tennessee.